Hello again, I'm back without holding an automaton, and I'm going to focus on 2v2 Smash Up for a little bit before the Marvel expansion comes out. I find it quite a bit more interesting than 4-player free-for-all, and so do a number of other strong players and groups around the world. I personally like to produce ratings or statistics that are as correct as I can make them. Other players just like to have a game where they feel they won because they deserved to win, rather than because politics did weird things. Multiplayer games of three or more teams generally don't have such a thing as an objectively best move or objectively strong or weak play, which means that any rating list for four-player or even three-player free-for-all I produce always needs more of an asterisk than a 1v1 or 2v2 list would have. By the way, that is not unique to Smash Up, that is just multiplayer games in general. With more than two teams, if two or more players agree on the same wrong idea, which, in my experience, I usually get hit with this in terms of base selection, and one player has the right idea, the individual player who has sort of the objectively correct idea often ends up in a worse spot with respect to victory point efficiency at their base than the players who share the same wrong idea. And because of this, you often have to play wrong in specific ways to do well with specific groups of players. In 2v2, this isn't a problem. There's only two teams. If your opponents do something wrong, it always benefits your team's chance to win. It can never end up king-making for a third team because there isn't a third team. And that makes it possible in 2v2, just like 1v1, to approach an idea of perfect or correct play. That, in turn, means that there is this goal I can try to approach and never reach of having a rating list be objectively correct for how good factions are. Only limited by the fact that I'm human, I make mistakes, I get bad ideas, I'm probably not the greatest ignobles player, etc. As far as I know, 2v2 has always been the most popular unofficial variant of Smash Up. David Lee posted a set of rules on board game Geek in 2014. Yes, yeah, Smash Up has been around that long. And I use almost the same rules. I go for minimum changes from four-player free-for-all. You sit across the table from your partner so that teams alternate turns. Players score individual victory points at bases, which means that first, second, and third place VP are all a thing, and you can also get stuck with zero from fourth place. But teams win by having more total victory points than the other team at the end of the game. I play that the game ends exactly when it would in a four-player free-for-all game. One player with at least 15 victory points in sole possession of the lead before you take Madness into account. This means you can trigger over time when the teams aren't tied, which I find you can use to buy time to get back into a game. So... I like it better with that inconsistency between when the game ends and whether you win or draw, and it also does mean that the game can end in a draw. And on a related note, in three or four free-for-all player games, bleh, free for three or four player free-for-all games, when they go to overtime, it often feels to me like the winner becomes almost random, or at least a lot more random than who is ahead leading into overtime because politics of trying to figure out, well, if this player gets any points, it'll end the game and I'm not winning, leads to things happening that just mix up the order of players. Uh, multiplayer end games are weird. I have some interesting principles to talk about in 2v2, but I'm going to do one principle per video, and this video's principle was just giving the rules, and then I'm going to talk about actual game results. Because 2v2 gives relatively little data per game, you've only got one winner and one loser, and I have to verify that margin of victory means something statistically before I can get much use out of it. That means I can't really handle 75 factions with any degree of accuracy without spending my entire life playing Smash Up. And kind of not even then. Just to throw one number at you, the number of distinct two-deck teams in 2v2 with n factions is n over there times that's the number of first factions you can have n minus one is the number of second factions that are left times n minus two number of third factions you can take times n minus three number of fourth factions left and then divided by eight 
we're dividing by eight because if you flip around the two factions in one deck, you haven't changed the deck. Ninja Zombies and Zombie Ninjas are the same deck. Divide by another two because Alien Pirates and Pirate Aliens are the same deck and divide by a third two because Zombie Ninjas and Alien Pirates is the same team as Alien Pirates and Zombie Ninjas. But even though we're dividing by 8, this is still huge. For 75 different factions, we get 75 by 37 by 73 by 18, which is, oh my god, 3,646,350. Compare this to 2,775 possible decks made from 75 factions. You can see a bit of my problem if I try to handle the entire data space with 75 factions and get anything meaningful out of it. So I decided to try 20 to 24 factions, which is enough to make five distinct teams at a time without having to take the decks apart and put them back together to make new ones. I picked What Were We Thinking? because rock stars and explorers and, well, grannies are weird, but they're a great data point for... I just like the expansion. And then I went and posted a Reddit poll to see what other players thought would look interesting. Um, when I pulled what the winners were, it ended up with Awesome Level 9000, Science Fiction Double Feature, It's Your Fault, and Oops, You Did It Again. That makes a total of 21 factions because It's Your Fault has 5, and that is 21 by 5 by 19 by 9, which is only 17,955 possible teams. At least that's not 3 million. I'm going to see if I can play enough with these 21 factions before Marvel comes out to get a good impression of the relative strengths of these 21 factions. If I expand farther, I'll likely play mostly games within individual leagues that consist of 20 or so factions, and then do enough crossplay to correct for any differences in overall strength between these different leagues. That's just going to be so much easier for me to handle. So now I get to actually talk a bit about some games I played and some of the results I got, what I expected, etc. As you can see, if you look at the teams here, I started out with teams made entirely from one expansion. It's your fault we'll be benching one faction every time because it has five. I started out with superheroes that I could put their best foot forward, which is generally not going to be superheroes. The Ghosts, I expected to see them being the best faction out of these 21. They didn't look like it in their second game this time. They drew an average of one Ghostly Arrival per game, which is what they need. Unfortunately, they got both of them against the relatively easy It's Your Fault team and drew zero of them when facing down Rockstars, which is bad. I paired them with plants and bears with steampunks. The important thing to me was keeping bear and ghost separate because you would like to have one faction in each of your decks, if at all possible, that can adjust someone else's power total. Tying your partner is very, very good in 2v2 because you both get to claim the higher of the two places you would have taken for victory points. And this often means that if there's a player to my left whose deck can't affect my power total or my teammate's power total at all, I can go ahead and tie my partner, and that player to my left on his turn just has no good options at the base where I tied my partner. So, therefore, Baron Ghost in opposite decks helps the fact that they each have Titans and you can't bring both out at once if they're in the same deck. And I paired the Ghost with Plants because Venus Mantrap would much rather search for Ghost then failing to search for anything because bears don't have a two-power minion. The match for biggest loser in this set of five turned out to be pretty interesting because the Vikings got betrayed royally by both of their own bases. It started when the Greek Tornadoes, the Greek Nados, played a minion at Drakkar, selected to draw a card off the top of the Cowboy Vikings deck, and acquired a gold rush. Now, Cowboy Vikings and Egyptian Samurai don't exactly have the most options when it comes to dealing with a really good action in play from an opponent. 
they've got one card which lets them take that action and put it in their hand, and the Vikings did not draw that card until Gold Rush was already gone. On top of that, Longhouse's 25 power breakpoint let the Greek Nados slam a Gold Rush down on Longhouse and then start playing minions there and moving them away, and the Sharks, with their movement, the Dragon Sharks started doing the same thing, Oh, except they parked an Imperial Dragon there first. So now every time the Greek Natos play a minion on Longhouse, they draw a card, the Dragon Sharks draw a card, and the Vikings cry a lot. Huge Viking tears. It was it was horrible. Um, the Dragon Sharks are good enough at removing things. The Tornadoes are good enough at moving things away. That there was really no way that the other team could stop them from taking a big card advantage edge. And in a matchup with lots of extra plays and lots of removal, a card advantage edge gets much bigger than it would be in other matches. And it turned out when the Drakkar Gold Rush play happened, the matchup looked up pretty even with... 10 to 10 total points, one deck with six, one deck with four on each team, and the final score was not close. It was, what, 30 to 17? That means that after the Gold Rush hit play, It's Your Fault ran up a 20 to 7 lead in the rest of the game over Oops, You Did It Again, which is pretty crushing. Science fiction double feature, I arranged Ape with Time Travelers because they love extra, apes love extra actions, and it turns out that they crushed in their first game. I haven't played the final for which team will overall win this group yet, but in the second video, I'll have the final from this group and either all or all but the final of the next group.